From the ashes of the Roman Empire, a new era rose in Europe, an era of faith, of ambition, of architectural marvels that define gravity and touch the heavens. This is the Romanesque, a thousand years after Christ, a time of monasteries and plumage, where every stone bore the weight of devotion. Communities huddled with the shadows of towering abbeys, their chants echoing through vaulted ceilings. Then the 12th century dawned, ushering in an age of transformation. The Gothic spirit sorrowed, yearning for light and knowledge. Stained glass, a symphony of color, bathed the sacred space in ethereal glow. Every detail from gargoyles perched on high to delicate stone tracery whispered tales of faith and transcendence. Gothic cathedrals became more than houses of worship. They were centers of knowledge and intellectual change. In this film, we will discuss the remarkable Romanesque and Gothic eras and their lasting influence on architecture. In the early 19th century, art historians sought a label for medieval art that evoked its similarities to ancient Rome. Thus, Romanesque was born describing the European architectural style of the 11th and 12th centuries. Round arches, reminiscent of Rome's grand structures, formed the backbone of Romanesque buildings, like barrel and grown vaults. But Romanesque wasn't a monolithic style. It was a tapestry woven from diverse regional expressions, even within single locations. Now let's step inside the magnificent Pisa Cathedral, a prime example of the Romanist spirit. Its cruciform basilica layout with double aisles and galleries hugging the nave and transepts offers a sense of spacious grandeur. Above the crossing, a Byzantine-inspired dome perched on squinches and pendetives, whispers of distant architectural influences. Timbered trusses, roof, the remaining sections adding a touch of local character. Turning to the facade, we witness a symphony of marble arches, marching across the western face and encircling the church. This interplay of light and shadow adds depth and rhythm to the structure. Within polychrome regions supreme, altering bands of dark and light marble in horizontal bars create a mesmerizing visual texture. And gazing upward, we find our eyes drawn to the glittering Byzantine mosaics adorning the apse. Another testament to the multifaceted influences that shaped Romanesque art. But the cathedral isn't alone. It is sacred space embraces a circular baptistry and a cylindrical campanelli, standing as proud companions. And of course, no mention of Pisa is complete without acknowledging the leaning tower its 13-foot tilt a whimsical ode to the defiance of gravity and the enduring legacy of the Romanesque era. The baptistry, which was served as the community's baptismal site for new converts and infants. The three buildings are essentially the same in terms of style, with the exception of the upper part of the baptistry, which has a re-innovated Gothic exterior. While the famous Leaning Tower of Pisa is located on the Cathedral's Campanile, which is detached in the typical Italian style, the Cathedral's facade's theme is repeated in graceful arcade galleries that designated the tower's phases, effectively connecting the circular chapel to its parent structure. So the next time you encounter a Romanesque structure, Remember this journey through a stone in time, for these buildings are not just architectural marvels, they are whispers of a vibrant era, where regional flavors blended with distant influences to create a symphony of faith, artistry, and enduring charm. The Gothic style, born in the mid-12th century, transformed Europe's skyline with its pointed arches, ripped vaults and majestic cathedrals. This architectural movement wasn't just about construction, 
it was a testament to the medieval spirit reaching towards the divine. Behold, Notre Dame Charters, a masterpiece constructed between 11900 and 12200. Its soaring spires reaching heights over 100 meters have enchanted millions. Now let's talk about its impressive details. Rip vaults, a framework of intersecting arches and the flying buttresses, external struts supporting lateral thrust, were pivotal. Rather than burdening the interior with massive walls, the weight was gracefully borne externally. These architectural marvels not only supported the structure but allowed for expansive walls, welcoming light into sacred space. Central to Notre Dame's divine radiance were the three rose windows. The south rose window, the midday rose, crafted in 1260, spans almost 13 meters. Its 84 panels narrate the Last Judgment, with Christ at the center, surrounded by angels, saints, and the wise and foolish virgins. Opposite the North Rose window, from the mid-13th century, retained its original glass. Mary enthroned with the Christ child takes center stage, encircled by kings and prophets from the Old Testament. The West Rose window, the smallest and oldest, completed around 1225, depicts the Madonna and child in the center. The interact composition includes the 12 tribes of Israel, virtues and vices, and the zodiac signs associated with the months. But what made these windows not just architectural wonders, but also protective barriers against the elements? Stained glass glaziers fused colored glass, joined by lead stripes and painted details in enamel transforming natural light into divine radiance. As the 19th century drew to a close, a fascinating architectural trend emerged, the new Romanesque revival. Inspired by the grand imposing structures of the 11th and 12th centuries, these buildings echoed the past with their distinctive features. <laughs> فنسمع كلمة نيو تاني بقى المستحدث رومانسكو مستحدث بياخدوا في التاريخ ستايل وده كان مشهور قوي في الوقت ده في القرن ال 19 ان هم ناخد ستايل زي الرينيسانس او زي هنا رومانسكو ونعيد تقديمه بشكل مختلف. While their inspiration was clear, new Romanesque structures weren't simply replications. Architects of the time added their own touches, often simplifying arches and windows creating a distinct aesthetic. This evolution reflected the changing time and the evolving art of architecture. One of the new Romanesque architectural features represented an Adriana Pento building at Gamal Abdel Nasser Avenue 1923 in Alexandria. It's seen in its semicircular arches and arcade windows. The new Romanesque revival may have been a product of its time, but its legacy lives on. These structures, with their echoes of the past and their own unique innovation, continue to inspire and intrigue. They stand as testaments to the human desire to build, to create and to express ourselves through the enduring language of stone and form. جاء جاء مصر وهو عيلته جت مصر من قبليه وهو اتولد في المنصوره وبعد كده بدا مشواره كمهندس بان هو كان رسام او درافتسمان في في البلديه بالاسكندريه. Fast forward to the 19th century, a period of renewal and rediscovery. Enter new Gothic architecture. A revivalist movement that breathed new life into the medieval aesthetic. We have an impressive example in Egypt, 
especially the city of Alexandria. Alexandria spoils anyone who walks its streets with the wealthy of pretty sights. Palaces, museums, tours, you name it. On Sultan Hussein Street, hidden behind trees, Villa Abu Fadl, which was previously named Edwin Gore, appears as some sort of fairy tale dream. <laughs> the villa is said to consist of a dining room, salons filled with paintings, art and fireplaces, along with other fundamentals. Our architectural journey concludes, leaving us with the echoes of Romanesque and Gothic styles re-vibrating through the corridors of time. In arches and spires, we find not just in stone and mortar, but a testament to the enduring spirit of human creativity and expression. As we stand amidst these architectural marvels, we are reminded that the past continues to whisper to us through the stones urging us to build a future that pays homage to the timeless melodies of our architectural heritage.